So let's walk through now the details of how an Arduino Arduino communication system would work using this I squared C system. Um, I'm going to show you the software that's executing on master and slave and what's happening to these two wires. You don't actually really need to know what's happening to the two wires, but if you have some idea what the commands are doing, it will help you understand how to program the system. So here we have two Arduinos labeled master and slave. Uh, we've connected those to two of the digital ports uh, that are labeled on the board as being the clock and data lines for the I squared C libraries, because this is such a common thing to use. So notice we have a total of three lines. We, of course, ground, because it's nice for that we have to agree on ground. And then the other are two are just the ones we've been talking about. We're going to use a library called Wire. Um, and that's the I squared C library that allows us to talk uh, between these two and does all of that uh, I squared C communication that we're about to talk about. It's basically just using digital lines um, in, the, in the way that we're going to talk about and all the software uh, to run that. So on the master side, uh, you're going to include the library and you're going to call a function sort of uh, similar to other library functions you've seen. In this case, it just says begin. There'll be more software we put on the master here in a minute, but that starts the process of the master uh, getting on to the bus and say, hi, I'm going to be someone that's talking. We have different software running on the slave side. So both these Arduinos would be plugged into their separate uh, PCs, maybe running uh, uh, different sketches that you've downloaded to, to them. On the slave side, again, we have to include uh, the library. We're going to say begin, but this time we include a number. And that number is going to be the address of this slave. A really powerful and important thing of the I squared C library is you can talk to many devices at once. So the way we avoid contention, the way, way we avoid uh, people in a crowd or in a phone call all talking over the top of each other is everybody gets a separate address. And you can just pick whatever that is. In this case, we've picked eight. The next important thing we're going to do is we're going to say when a receive event happens, when some bits come flying at address eight here, at the slave Arduino, what should we do? And what we should do is we should call a function receive event. You will write that function and it's the thing that's actually going to get the bits and bytes. So we'll, this just tells the slave, when a, an event happens that I'm getting data, go out and call this function. Hand it that data. And then, as is often the case when we're doing serial communication, we need to say how many baud we're running, how many bits per second are going to fly. And that's enough to get the system started. So let's walk through now transmitting a byte and see how it really goes. So here's one master and maybe many slaves. We're trying to talk to this bottom one here. Um, and for some reason, I've changed the, the, uh, the address to, to number 45. So on the master, um, in the loop program, it might say, I'm going to begin transmitting to address 45. When we do that, um, the uh, data line and clock line on the master uh, are going to uh, be either grounded or floating, and we'll walk through that. But my little arrows here indicate they're in control. They're the lines that are actually being modulated. The little, little double S's here say that everybody else is listening. That means they're letting the lines float, and whatever happens on them, they'll, uh, they'll just let happen. We won't have any contention. So if you're just hanging around, you listen. So when this command starts, this begin transmission, the first thing that's going to happen is both the data lines and the clock lines are going to go from low, because we've been, having, we've been grounding them, the master was, and it's going to let them go high. And uh, when it does that, in a particular little bit of timing there, that's going to tell everybody that's listening, hey, something's about to happen, listen up. So that's just the start signal of, it's like uh, you ringing a bell uh, on the phone or something of, okay, we're, we're about to start talking. Then we've got to tell uh, all of these guys uh, who we're talking to. So uh, a set of bits get written uh, out here. Notice the clock line is just going up, down, up, down. It's done that by either being grounded or floating. Grounded or floating. Because remember, you never connect any of these lines directly to high because that would make something burn up. So it starts sending out the drum beat that says bits are coming. 
um, and this is when you should listen. On the data line, which is the more interesting part, we're going to send out an address. And I've written out here 0101101, uh, which hopefully is binary for 45. And that goes to everybody. So everybody, and they're all listening because that start bit happened, uh, gets an address and they know what they're listening to is an address and their pins are all floating because they know they're supposed to listen. So everything works. Slaves 1 and 2 here that have some different addresses that I've written out in binary here didn't see their address. So they don't do anything. They say, oh, that wasn't me. Phone call wasn't for me. But this guy says, oh, hey, that was my address. So um, the master, uh, which keeps setting the clock so that it, it's in control of when the bits go, but it knows, or it's expecting, that it's going to get an acknowledge back, that one of the slaves is going to say, I am address 45, so it lets its data line float so it can receive. The slave, whose address matched, does one low bit. It goes from floating to grounded and back in one bit cycle, and that's an acknowledgement that says, someone out here got your message and indeed is, is address 45. So by golly, there's, there's someone ready to receive your message. The master doesn't know which these is, but it does know there's one of them. And now this chip knows it's the one that's supposed to receive. These guys are going to go to sleep. They're not going to pay attention anymore. So that was all what happens when that begin transmission line happens. And, and if it uh, succeeds, then the master is going to know, oh, there's someone out there indeed to talk to, and it has this address. Then it can start writing. That's the whole point of this. So I've written here some ASCII text and some uh, single byte of information. So this looks like one, two, three, four, five, six or so by bytes of information, one for each character, one for the, the value x. And so again, everybody on the receive side, the slave side is going to be floating. They're listening. These guys are listening, but it doesn't matter. They're not going to actually accept the data. Um, that's what little, little double S's here mean. Now the master is talking, so it's going to be setting the line low and float, low and float, to send out this data here. It also is going here and here, but it doesn't matter because they're not in a mode to receive it. And it's going to keep modulating the clock so that this receiver knows every time that there's a, uh, there's a high value on the clock, oh, I should look for a data value. And notice as I've drawn it, each of the clock signals occurs right in the middle of one of the data bits. That's how the slave knows when to go read that digital value. So lots of bytes go flying by. They would have those headers and parity checks and other uh, uh, excess data on them, not just the binary data that we're trying to transmit. Um, every time a byte is received, once again, oh, they got cut off a little bit, there's going to be a got it. There's going to be an acknowledgement. So the uh, master will send out some data, and how much it data is going to be part of the format. It'll send out a frame. And then uh, the slave will say, I heard your frame. And if the master doesn't get that, it then might go into the protocol and say, oh, I should resend or I should set an error flag. But there's always this sort of handshaking. You did you get that? I got that. Uh, and oh, then it's ready. You're ready for me to send the next byte. And that will continue until I get through all of the bytes that I wanted to send. And then finally, um, I'm going to say in the master, because we've been going through the, the software only on the master here, um, I'm going to say I'm now done. Um, and when, uh, when I do that, I'm going to uh, uh, set uh, the, uh, a particular sequence where this is end signal, that's a line going low. Um, I'm going to broadcast the clock for a while, and then I'm going to stop sending clock signals. So that particular sequence of the data line goes low and the clock signal turns off tells the slave, oh, that was the end of transmission. And so now I know I've received the whole message. That was all of the master side. Let's look at what goes on in the slave side. And if you got that, then you can, you can run your code. You get everything you need. Remember, we got two Arduinos here. Everything we just talked about was the software to transmit. Now we're going to receive. So um, we're going to, of course, include the library, because we've got to have that. 
In the setup, you're going to see uh, what we talked about before. We're going to pick an address conveniently, 45. Uh, that's what, 50, what this example is running. That had better be the address that your master tries to send to, or it ain't going to work. We're going to say, when there's a receive event, what should I do? And in this case, we're going to call a function, which is down here, uh, called receive event. And so that's going to, every time a byte uh, shows up on the I squared C bus, this is the software that's going to handle it. And we're going to say how fast we're running. The loop then is strangely empty because it, it isn't actually the thing handling the software. It's this function down here. So this function down here could be getting the data and printing it to the serial port. Or it could be getting the data and shoving it into some global variables that lived up here. And all that is happening um, sort of invisibly to the loop. Uh, there's only one processor here, so it's not like it happens in parallel. But this is interrupts. The loop will suddenly stop operating. You won't know that because a byte is received. This go guy will go out, get that byte, and then it'll come back and the loop, loop will keep operating. So you can write your loop to be doing whatever you care about. And in parallel, from your perspective, Receiving bit bytes is happening out here on the I squared C bus. So you'll just want to assign some variables that the loop program could use, and data will just start showing up in those variables. Kind of like magic. So let's look at this receive event. Um, it will get, uh, by default from the, from the library, it'll be called with a, um, a parameter how many bytes were sent. So in that last event uh, example we went through was five or six or something like that. So all of that stuff that we saw, bytes being sent, hey, I got it, byte is sent, hey, I got it, byte sent, hey, I got it, I'm done, okay, would all happen. And then this receive event uh, would get kicked off, and it would say, there are six bytes waiting in the queue for you to process. So, while there are bytes available, extract one of those through this read command into, let's say, a character, print that character to the serial port. Keep doing that uh, for a while, and then finally, hey, let's read uh, our value x and print that. So this, this is just a super simple version of a, a code that can pull bytes off of the queue that they've piled up into from the, the I squared C. It uses a while loop to grab them while they're still available. And then finally, the very last byte, we happen to know in this case, uh, was, a, was an integer byte value, uh, not a character. So it, again, knowing what we should receive, we put that in here as, let's read that one into an, I an integer. And in this case, we just printed it. If we declared x up here to be a global variable, then when we go back and start operating in the loop, all of a sudden, x would be defined there. So the point is, this software plus the last software is the minimal I squared C communication system you need. With that, you can start sending uh, bytes and characters back and forth between two different Arduinos. And if you wanted to send floating point variables, et cetera, you'd need to know how many bytes are going to get sent to that floating point variable, so you know, uh, you know how many to peel off at a time, and you could then read them into a floating point variable. This is why it's important to know that floats are four bytes and longs are something else. Uh, you need to know how, how those chunks are coming at you. But it's not too hard to see how to modify this to do any communication you want.